What really happened to Dick Van Dyke, star in The Dick Van Dyke Show? Dick Van Dyke was born Richard Wayne Van Dyke on December 13, 1925, in West Plains, Missouri, U.S. to Hazel Victoria, a stenographer, and Lauren Wayne Cookie Van Dyke a salesman. He grew up in Danville, Illinois. He is the older brother of actor Jerry Van Dyke, who sometimes appeared as his brother in The Dick Van Dyke Show but is best known for a role in the TV series Coach. Van Dyke is a Dutch surname, although he has English, Irish, and Scottish ancestry as well. Van Dyke left high school in 1944, his senior year, intending to join the United States Army Air Forces for pilot training during World War II. Denied enlistment several times for being underweight, he was eventually accepted for service as a radio announcer before transferring to the special services and entertaining troops in the continental United States. On February 12, 1948, while appearing at the Chapman Park Hotel on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles, he and the former Marjorie Willett were married on the radio show Bride and Groom. They had four children, Christian, Barry, Stacy, and Carrie Beth. They divorced in 1984 after a long separation. Van Dyke lived with longtime companion Michelle Triola Marvin for more than 30 years, until her death in 2009. On February 29, 2012, at the age of 86, Van Dyke married 40-year-old makeup artist Arlene Silver. They had met six years earlier at the SAG Awards. During the late 1940s, Van Dyke was a radio DJ in Danville, Illinois. In 1947, Van Dyke was persuaded by pantomime performer Phil Erickson to form a comedy duo with him called Eric and Van the Merry Mutes. They brought their act to Atlanta, Georgia, in the early 1950s and performed a local television show featuring original skits and music called The Merry Mute. In November 1959, Van Dyke made his Broadway debut in The Girls Against the Boys. He then played the lead role of Albert Peterson in Bye Bye Birdie, which ran from April 14, 1960, to October 7, 1961. That musical won four Tony Awards including Van Dyke's Best Featured Actor Tony, in 1961. In 1980, Van Dyke appeared in the title role in the first Broadway revival of The Music Man. Van Dyke's start in television was with WDSU-TV New Orleans Channel 6 NBC, first as a single comedian and later as MC of a comedy program. Van Dyke's first network TV appearance was with Dennis James on James Chance of a Lifetime in 1954. He later appeared in two episodes of The Phil Silvers Show during its 1957-58 season. From 1961 to 1966, Van Dyke starred in the CBS sitcom The Dick Van Dyke Show, in which he portrayed a comedy writer named Rob Petrie. Van Dyke won three Emmy Awards as Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series, and the series received four Emmy Awards as Outstanding Comedy Series. From 1971 to 1974, Van Dyke starred in an unrelated sitcom called The New Dick Van Dyke Show in which he portrayed a local television talk show host. Although the series was developed by Carl Reiner and starred Hope Lang as his wife, and he received a Golden Globe nomination for his performance, the show was less successful than its predecessor, and Van Dyke pulled the plug on the show after just three seasons. In 1973, Van Dyke voiced his animated likeness for the October 27, 1973 installment of Hanna-Barbera's The New Scooby-Doo Movies, Scooby-Doo Meets Dick Van Dyke, the series' final first-run episode. The following year, he received an Emmy Award nomination for his role as an alcoholic businessman in the television movie The Morning After 1974. Van Dyke revealed after its release that he had recently overcome a real-life drinking problem. He admits he was an alcoholic for 25 years. That same year he guest starred as a murderous photographer on an episode of Columbo, Negative Reaction. Van Dyke returned to comedy in 1976 with the sketch comedy show Van Dyke and Company, which Andy Kaufman made his prime time debut. Despite being cancelled after three months, the show won an Emmy Award for Outstanding Comedy Variety Series. After a few guest appearances on the long-running comedy variety series The Carol Burnett Show, Van Dyke became a regular on the show, in the fall of 1977. However, he only appeared in half of the episodes of the final season. For the next decade he appeared mostly in TV movies. One atypical role was as a murdering judge on the second episode of the TV series Matlock in 1986 starring Andy Griffith. In 1987, he guest starred in an episode of Airwolf, with his son Barry Van Dyke, who was the lead star of the show's fourth and final season on USA Network. 
In 1989, he guest starred on the NBC comedy series The Golden Girls portraying a lover of Beatrice Arthur's character. This role earned him his first Emmy Award nomination since 1977. His film work affected his TV career. The reviews he received for his role as D.A. Fletcher in Dick Tracy led him to star as the character Dr. Mark Sloan first in an episode of Jake and the Fat Man then in a series of TV movies on CBS that became the foundation for his popular television drama Diagnosis, Murder 1993-2001. Van Dyke continued to find television work after the show ended, including a dramatically and critically successful performance of The Gin Game, produced for television in 2003 that reunited him with Mary Tyler Moore. In 2003, he portrayed a doctor on Scrubs. 2004 special of The Dick Van Dyke Show titled The Dick Van Dyke Show Revisited was heavily promoted as the first new episode of the classic series to be shown in 38 years. Van Dyke and his surviving cast members recreated their roles, although nominated for a primetime Emmy, the program was roundly panned by critics. In 2006 he guest starred as college professor Dr. Jonathan Maxwell for a series of Murder 101 mystery films on the Hallmark Channel. Van Dyke began his film career by playing the role of Albert J. Peterson in the film version of Bye Bye Birdie 1963. That same year, Van Dyke was cast in two roles, as the chimney sweep Bert, and as bank chairman Mr. Dawes Sr., in Walt Disney's Mary Poppins 1964. Van Dyke's attempt at a Cockney accent has been lambasted as one of the worst accents in film history, cited by actors since as an example of how not to sound. According to Van Dyke, his accent coach was Irish, who didn't do an accent any better than I did, and that no one alerted him to how bad it was during the production. Still, Mary Poppins was successful on release and its appeal has endured. Chim Chim Cheri, one of the songs that Van Dyke performed in Mary Poppins, won the Academy Award for Best Original Song for the Sherman Brothers, the film's songwriting duo. In 1960 films Van Dyke starred in throughout unsuccessful at the box office, including What a Way to Go, with Shirley MacLaine, Lt. Robin Crusoe, USN, Fitzwilly, The Art of Love with James Garner and Elka Summer, Some Kind of a Nut, Never a Dull Moment with Edward G. Robinson, and Divorce American Style with Debbie Reynolds and Gene Simmons. A not complete failure he has a successful role as Caractacus Pot in the successful musical version of Ian Fleming's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang 1968, which co-starred Sally Ann Howes and featured the same songwriters and as Mary Poppins. In 1969, Van Dyke appeared in the comedy drama The Comic, written and directed by Carl Reiner. Van Dyke portrayed a self-destructive silent film-era comedian who struggles with alcoholism, depression, and his own rampant ego. Also in 1969, Van Dyke played Reverend Clayton Brooks, a small-town minister who leads his Iowa town to quit smoking for 30 days to win $25 million from a tobacco company in cold turkey, although that film was not released until 1971. On Larry King Live, Van Dyke mentioned he turned down the lead role in The Omen which was played by Gregory Peck. He also mentioned his dream role would have been the Scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz. 21 years later in 1990, Van Dyke, whose usual role had been the amiable hero, took a small but villainous turn as the crooked D.A. Fletcher in Warren Beatty's film Dick Tracy. Van Dyke returned to motion pictures in 2006 with Curious George as Mr. Bloomsbury and as villain Cecil Fredericks in the Ben Stiller film Night at the Museum. He reprised the role in a cameo for the sequel, Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian 2009, but it was cut from the film. It can be found in the special features on the DVD release. He also played the character again in the third film, Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb 2014. In 2018, Van Dyke portrayed Mr. Dawes Jr. in Mary Poppins Returns. He had previously portrayed both Bert and Mr. Dawes Sr. in the original film. Thank you for listening to the story.